meeting of Monday, September 9th, 2013 of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, got a, a few agenda items uh, tonight. Um, we uh, should get to uh, most of them because of time. We have a couple challenges. Um, one is Carol might be uh, called over to the selectmen uh, at any point in time. Uh, they're having their meeting at the same time, but I'm hoping that we can steal it from most, if not all, of, of what we need uh, to do here. Um, the, uh, with respect to the minutes of July 29th, those didn't make it into the package because they were in the previous package. I know that not everyone yet looked at it, so I think we'll probably put that off uh, until the next one and we'll get them into the package along with whatever other minutes we have at that point. Okay, So I think we'll, we'll probably table that. So uh, starting right off, uh, we've got several things to do on the Sims uh, project tonight. Um, there's been uh, a lot of progress on a lot of different fronts uh, up there on the hill, and um, I'll let Jake kind of describe the current uh, state of affairs. Uh, but then uh, we need to do several different things tonight uh, in order to keep the ball rolling here. One is, as you've got in your package, are, there's uh, Ben Condo documents, and we can go over those, and I'll, I'll give you the take of uh, Edie, uh, the outside attorney who's taking a look at them. Uh, there are the uh, regulatory agreements uh, for the affordable housing, uh, and then there's the marketing plan for the affordable housing. Uh, and then finally, uh, we just want to go over um, a couple, or I just want to go over a couple of technical things that come up that we've been dealing with um, our outside counsel on Jonathan Buck, and so I'll kind of go through those things. But that's kind of the notion is um, quite a few things to get through. They should flow pretty, hopefully, easily here. But uh, but to start the meeting, why don't we have Jake just kind of give us an update of uh, what's going on up there. Sure. Thanks. Are we going to touch on the first thing? We can. Okay. We can. Um, I just grabbed this as I was going at the door just to, as a visual reference. And also to show the court. So we are continuing to make uh, progress um, in a lot of fronts. Um, the big news is we were able to get the <laughs> sewer connection, sewer storm drain connection over off of Grove Street, um, and that was our final utility connection. So that enabled our site work contractor to um, focus on doing the, um, the turning lanes and the crosswalks and some of the islands that are um, in Summer Street. Um, yeah. So that will be happening over the next uh, week to 10 days to finish up. Um, we also now have, as I think I mentioned last uh, time, the, the utility lines are now down for everything on the site except for the ancillary lines that um, go to the um, temporary uh, cell tower, which is slated to be removed this week. It is? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T-Mobile will confirm that um, on Saturday. So mm -hmm. we are feeling good about that. Um, that This is the last area of um, sort of grading, regrading that we're going to be doing and then finishing off the corner here. Um, we have begun the process of um, putting in um, the final fencing that's coming around this side. We've been done. We started this section today. We've been coordinating with some of these neighbors on uh, the exact layout of what was on the plan and field conditions. Um, so we think we resolved all those things to a satisfactory um, manner. And the fences, we're going to try to have another contractor meet in the middle to get that done over the next three weeks. Um, the building. Um, the buildings are progressing, um, but before we get to the buildings, the the park has been um, rough graded. Um, the hardscape is going in now, so the planting land will follow. So this is moving along quite nicely. Um, we've done some fencing off and cordoning off um, the site where there's a gate that's been added here, um, and then fencing around this building. Um, so these are the, this is the D1 and the D2. Um, we are the fencing here to contain access into building four. Um, we've got a detailed plan, safety plan that we've reviewed with the building inspector and going through the normal building code, you know, the building um, uh, checklist uh, for occupancy of that building. And we're, we're pushing for a TCO, temporary uh, certificate of occupancy, so that we can begin um, occupying this building and operating it. In the garage level, there's a partition that's going up so people can't drive through the garages. Um, that allows us to phase in. But um, so we've been working with the building inspector on that safety plan um, and um, the, you know, are allowing egresses for fire safety, um, but also cordoning off the construction zone um, in, in a phased phase way. So 
Um, we continue to um, make progress with the fine, um, the hardscape and the landscaping. This has actually been sodded uh, over the weekend, so that's really starting to take a finished approach, a uh, finished look. Um, the entry plaza is essentially done now. Um, the pavers are in, the planters are in, they're, they're actually being planted right now, they're setting the plants. Um, the, the decking on the pool, the fencing has now been installed with the gates. Um, the decking is 95% in right now, so, so there's some extra railings that will be going in. Um, and then the finishing off of the interior of the pool, but that'll be sectioned off and we'll probably turn over closer with building three. So we've, uh, we've had some challenges. There was a leak in a pipe that created some um, reworking of some units, but it's typical in construction. We've been dealing with that and dealing with the building department on um, kind of reinspecting um, a couple of units, a few units. Um, that has created a little bit of a delay from where we wanted to be, but it is what it is. And uh, we feel that um, within a week or so, we should be ready for TCO, the first building, and that will bring access into the site. Um, the brokers were on the site just taking a peek at where, where these buildings are um, and uh, not bringing any outside um, clients or anything to the site, but just to get um, a refresh digital photo and, um, and just to see where they are. Um, they're getting very excited. They're chomping at the bit. We will be applying for TCOs um, as soon as we can without occupancy, um, with occupancy prohibited, but allowing people in the these buildings to show them for the buyers, and that's another um, public access that we need um, that would be following on the TCO with the, with the um, opening of the site. Um, we are getting ready for uh, final paving. Um, we expect to come all the way up the road around around this circle and hopefully around in the back, um, as well as the, the, the connector to Woodside Lane. Um, and that, again, will be even more of a high level of finish to the overall site. So the building exteriors are done. Landscaping is, is beginning to go in over here around this building. Um, we're very excited to, once we get to moving our, our temporary fence over to this side, and having this whole section on both sides of the road at least be finished. So um, we're working in that direction. Um, we're still projecting um, end of October, uh, trying to turn this building. It's really tight. It's, real, it's a real, real push for us. Um, but the contractor's holding to that schedule um, and things are doing well. On the shelter site, um, um, the shelter's getting close to having, um, in closing the building. The, the roof is, is very close to being finished. Um, the final framing is, is going in now on one of the wings of the building, but they've already started um, shingling the roof. Um, tar paper, uh, not tar paper, but uh, weather <laughs> paper is going up on the sides of the building <laughs> and the windows are going in. Um, as we speak, so we're very excited for them to start their siding and their window installation. And um, I think their building, the exterior, will increasingly become finished. Um, as we've talked about, our signage uh, is now in, uh, the, the hardscape, the planting is still to go, but the irrigation lines and all the power lines have been coordinated um, there. So, um, shelters operation here, uh, the marketing center, is going through a sort of an upgrade refinishing now that the utility work is done in that area. We're trying to bring the sidewalks down past their site for them. They're going to be doing their temporary blacktop and a little bit of landscaping and kind of a popping out of their, their sale center um, there. So in a nutshell, that's, that's what's happening on the site. Do we have their plan for what all they're doing down there? Their landscaping? For the marketing trailer? To temporary? Yes, it's, it's per, yeah. well, it's per, it's the it's per their, their plan. I know the orientation of the, of the, of the We never had a plan with shrubs and things like that on it. We'll have to check. We'll have to check because I thought that was part of their special permit. But I, I could be wrong. You, you sure the it was? The plan we it, saw. I mean, it's all going to get ripped up at the end. It is. I guess I seem to recall maybe a couple little shrubs in front of the building, in front of the trailer, but I mean, that's just, uh, double check. I thought it was part of the special permit. We should probably have it on file, whatever yeah, we'll it is. Because we have a plan on file yeah. that never got turned around, and yeah. now if that plan is also supposed to have landscaping. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that it's contained within their layout yeah. and yeah. not intruding in on the conservation restricted areas. Yeah, I, I think that it was only between all their parking, um, paved parking area, the road, and the front of the building. I don't think it was in the back, as I recall, but um, 
but we'll check. Yeah, let's just get it on file. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever it is. Just to avoid any questions that, you know, who approved that or whatever, yeah. 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 Let's see what it is. Hey Bruce, I have no questions. Chrissy, anything else? No. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Jake. Yep. Um, stick around in case any questions come up on the other stuff. That might be great, but okay. uh, I think we'll start. Um, Moving on to a couple of the things that we need to uh, hopefully uh, entertain motions to approve tonight. Um, the first is why don't we uh, first grab uh, the condo documents, which uh, are the there's two master deeds and two declarations of trust. We ask Laura Wiener to come home. Yeah, and that's a great idea. Laura's going to help us out because she's been immersed. Immersed, that's a very good word. I was going to say involved, but certainly immersed is better in both the... Uh, Do you mind if I open the window? Is there any more? Sure, that's fine. You want me to stay or stay? Yeah, if you stay back there, we can yell if we need to. Um, so on the condo documents, uh, Laura, why don't you you want to give us a little bit of background of yeah. some of the back and forth that's going um, on? So uh, Edie Natter reviewed the condo docs mostly for um, looking for the affordable housing issues and making sure it conforms with all of our requirements. And um, there were just a couple of small issues, and um, they, they got resolved. I mean, the, the long and the short of it. The, the version that you see, Edie had made one more comment today, and um, so there was one more small change, which I can give you um, a, in a red line, just the page that changed. That would be great. Um, as in the, my reading of the, yeah, okay. um, in my reading of the doc of the special permit and the LDA. I don't, there, you have to approve the condo docs, but there's no place for you to sign them. I think. Okay. It, it's just a, an approval that we will record in the minutes. Okay. Okay. Is there anything to add? I reviewed uh, the condominium documents as well, and um, not for any of the subject matter that Edie Netter was looking at, but just generally in terms of compliance with Chapter 183A, which is the condominium statute, um, and making sure that if you, uh, the, the structure of the two condominiums uh, all makes sense. And uh, in general, I would say, yes, they're fine. Um, in, in fact, you know, kudos to the drafter. They're, they're very well done. Um, I did find a few things of a clerical nature. Um, I don't think that they would necessarily prevent me from voting to approve them, but it might make sense for me to send a letter um, if, yep. so does, if, if it's the board's pleasure uh, to the drafter and just say, here are a couple of clerical um, things that you might want to uh, fix before it goes to record, actually. And Jake, I can go tell you offline what they are. I mean, sure. I don't want to. I mean, they're, they're minutia, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's. Uh, um, I, I, I could give examples, but I don't want to slow down the process here. Christine, I just have some quick questions, like clarifications, and it's just for my own knowledge. The the open spaces and parks um, are part of the common space throughout these documents. And I'm just curious, and I know they have to abide by the uh, maintenance and the conservation restrictions that we have. There was one section in here that was talking about pets. <laughs> pets that, that they have to be approved by the condo guys, or by the trustees, as far as which pets can be allowed and how many and all this. And they also said they have to be approved for being permitted in the open spaces. So I'm wondering how that works with the general public. Is the general public permitted to have pets to walk through there, or is it going to be restricted? Uh, that is a good question. <laughs> um, I believe that the philosophy was to have the same rules and regulations as a public park. 
Um, I don't know if all parks in Arlington have pets. Um, it's up to the Parks and Recreation Commission? Yep, yep. And it could just be the way I'm reading it, too. I could tell you where it is. It's uh, section 9.1.3. Are you there already? Oh, you're fast. So they're talking about it, you know, that the trustees approve whether they're permitted within the primary common elements of which the open spaces would be one. So that was one of my major questions, is how those common open spaces work. Okay. As it relates to the public versus how it relates With to the, the condo documents. Right. And are there other restrictions maybe that, or is that a restriction to the general public and will there be other ones maybe that need to be brought forward? Um, well, to be honest with you, I knew that we were going to be having control and restrictions for inside the buildings and in the residential portions of the project is typical with residential. Um, um, I did not see that part as in regards to the um, how they're being treated for the parks themselves. Um, I would say that as proposed, it is what it says it is, um, and but we can look at that. Well, it doesn't talk well, about the people yeah. that don't own anything. Exactly. Which so is I, the general and public. They, and so. this document really wouldn't. So I think it right. would still be an open question, a good one. Um, and how they control that if the general public can bring dogs and then the residents have to be approved for their dogs, how that works. But on the outdoor areas. Indoor, I understand. That. Right. Or, or, or it may be that we're making sure that the, the, the pets that are part of living in the residential portion of the community aren't disrupting the public space. And we would be able to say, hey, your dog is a problem. You know, you can't be. Mm. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. Because they do talk about breeds of dogs and all of that. Also. I, yeah. I don't, I think they'd be hard pressed if the general public was allowed to have the dogs or whatever pets in the parks. Mm -hmm. I think it would be, they'd be a member of the public as well at that point. Mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. think. I don't think that the condo, the, exactly. But, but you know, I, I think the open question, once again, is, is what's the policy on pets going to be? And, and it's the I town's decision, right? On that, or I'm how does that sure. work? I, I seem to recall, space. is it? Well, the, if the, if the so, condo guys are space. responsible so. for maintaining it, and they're getting assessed fees for it, and the trustees are in charge of, main, of monitoring it and making rules for it, what is the town in charge of? would be my question. I don't think the town is in charge of any of it. Any of it other than to having its representatives on, within the governance of the management portion of it with the CONCOM and the land trust having a say in the, the management. The CONCOM and the land trust. Mm -hmm. And that's more as managers. So if the condo trustees decide to say no dogs, that's the way it would probably be then. Well, I'm not so sure. I mean, not that I they're saying it, that, but if they change the rules one day and decided the, to say that. There's already a provision in here that talks about, you know, what kind of pets are permitted right. in the primary unit or in the primary con common elements. So, you know, that would be, uh, you know, dogs who do not exceed 75 pounds. Right, I, know, yeah, I saw or, that. Or but not does that, one of the offending breeds. But that's right? only for the people that live there. That live there, right. And so, would that? I'm I'm thinking maybe it would carry over and apply to the general public. If I don't they think there's so any restriction it. now. I would say actually probably not because it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't restrict say. it. Silence, so. But I, I think yeah. it's a, an enforcement issue too. I mean, by the time you know you get a trustee out there saying, oh, gee, there's a dog that's over 100 pounds, can't stay. You know, the person takes their dog and leaves. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. sort of a I, I, I can understand the potential yeah. for an issue if you have a vicious works, yeah. dog out there. But or like if, if there's a general public person there and their dog is causing a problem and they don't live there, who who do people call? Do they call the dog? Yeah, I, I thought Guys there the was town? a delineation though within the common area elements and some of it is, is I don't know if that initial link. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you have a map that goes, there's a map that goes with it. So there's a, there's the, the rules of the management of the open space are what those CR documents, you know, are have been approved as to form. So I think there's a pet policy. We'd have to go back at it, you know, off the top of my head. Oh, was exactly there what it was. Oh, maybe. Okay. And so I think it should be it should be in those documents. And if it's not, that should be clarified when we finalize and record yeah. the final CR. And this could carry over to other things. Pets was just the one example, yeah. but you know, 
maybe drinking in the park or yeah. whatever. Yeah, but other I think there's a delineation between or... types of common area elements where there's around the buildings, there's a common area for the buildings, there's different common areas for each of the condominium units, mm -hmm. uh, the, the for sale portion versus the others. So um, I, I understand we're really trying to get this approved as to form and then attach the exhibit, um, which has the, the, deline the delineations to it, um, that would be that attachment. So, um, but I would suggest that we, we, we double check the CR documents mm -hmm. and then... It's not a stop uh, from approving anything, yeah, okay. but it was just a general question, yeah, yeah. how that all works. Yeah. I've never lived in a condo development, so I don't know how it works <laughs> with it. But just reading through that, that, that question came up. Okay. And then the only other question I had, and this is probably normal also, is it is it normal for the um, owners to be allowed to subdivide their units usually, their condominium units? Because that's in here also that they can yeah. I mean, they so can subdivide or they can combine, and maybe that's it, normal it's, language. It's um, frequently seen with um, what I call flats. You know, so if you own two units side by side or one above the other. Um, you can combine the two if you get the approval of the condominium trusts, and you know because technically there's a little bit of common area between each unit, you know, between mm -hmm. the ceiling of your downstairs unit and the floor of your upstairs one. So you're penetrating through a little bit of common area to um, merge those into into one unit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I, I it, it, I'm a little hard pressed to see that there would be great demand to do that in a townhome situation because, you know, you're kind of you're. There's a duplication of rooms. You're going to wind up with two kitchens and two bathrooms. Well, bathrooms might be desirable, but you know it's not quite the same as if you've got a you know a, a flat side by side and a tower or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's sometimes seen as a, a marking advantage, or there's there's demand from the unit owners, and if you don't have that. Uh, provision, you have to go through a more formal amendment of the condominium documents to create it, and mm -hmm. that can be difficult because you have to get a certain percentage of unit owners uh, approving it. Um, so this paragraph is inserted to make that process a little easier. Um, but it's a good question because you know part of the economic understanding of the scheme mm -hmm. is based upon there being 12 for sale exactly. units, That's what I'm and if they about are merged that. into one and we wind up with 11, that merged unit may be taxed at a lesser value than the two units of, as if they were standing alone. And also the affordable units, does that change the percentage of different things that need to happen? If one of those are subdivided or combined? Well, I think that you would have a sale though, because of those two units would be purchased, mm -hmm. so you, your tax basis would sort of be assessed off of those sale prices, so mm -hmm. maybe initially um, that wouldn't be an issue. I guess you could argue that down the road, down the road it would yeah. be diminishing the value. Um, that would have to be part of the approval process, I think, within the condominium association, because their, their pro rata to share of cost probably wouldn't change. It would be added together. Correct. In fact, you probably could add the small common area and have it be larger. <laughs> so, so there's there's a lot of inter interrelationships. Um, yeah. I agree, though, it would be um, unusual, I think, to have townhomes because uh, be combined because um, the circulation for each don't match up. So the stairs aren't next to the stairs, and so there's the hallways in the back are also duplicated. So it's just not very yeah. efficient. That's why I'm surprised could happen, to see it in there, or to subdivide it more than it is. It even seems more uncommon. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that there's a balance with these types of documents where you're trying to do what is according to statute and customary, and they usually end up being reused over and over again, um, the, fo the, the main form of them. So, um, okay. I'm not sure if there's any more meaning behind it than that. All right, that's all. Great. That's, no, that's, that's a lot. And then all the square footages are going to be filled in, right, eventually, and the sheet numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. When it gets converted, I guess. When it gets converted. Right. Well, it's not condos now. When oh, I see. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Based on the architect's um, form plans. Okay. Thanks, Christine. Mm -hmm. Andy? I'm also. You're also. Carol? Okay. Um, I don't either. Um, if everyone is uh, uh, okay with the um, debate and the questions, I'd entertain a motion to approve the condo documents. Um, 
subject to uh, Bruce uh, getting over his um, uh, clerical um, and administrative uh, uh, changes over to uh, the redeveloper with respect to uh, uh, the documents themselves. So, uh, but I think if you're comfortable that those are such that we can approve the documents uh, we've got tonight uh, with those small changes, then uh, I'll entertain that motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. That's our first piece of business. Quite a few documents. That's kind of nice. Um, the next thing, there's actually a couple different things that we want to uh, approve on the next ones. Um, the first is, um, well, the first is, let's, let's do the, uh, we'll do the affordable housing marketing plan as well as, uh, and then the regulatory agreements as well. So I think we're going to approve two things here. We'll approve the, um, uh, the marketing plan uh, or entertain a motion uh, to approve the marketing plan. And then um, the uh, other two documents are the regulatory documents, the amended regulatory documents um, that have made their way through the HCD. And Laura, maybe you can update us on, mm -hmm. on all of these uh, great documents. So the marketing of the units is being done by a, um, a subcontractor to the developer called SEB, which stands for Stockard, Engler, and Bingham. Um, they also did the marketing for Brigham, so mm -hmm. they're familiar with Arlington. And um, the marketing plan has gone through, um, I reviewed it and made changes and made a number of additions to the list of people that they market it to. But it's also been approved by DHCD, which um, they look for standard things. They're very interested in that it be affirmatively marketed. So um, we did get permission to have 70% of the units for Arlington residents. Residents meaning anyone who lives, works, or goes to school in Arlington. Um, but the other 30% are open to anyone in the, um, anywhere. And um, the intention is to, because Arlington is more white in general than the Boston area, to, um, to allow people of color to move to, to Arlington as well, to be open to that. Um, so, it's pretty standard, the methods, the lottery, the way those things are done have been pretty standardized by DHCD over time, which I find very helpful because it, it means you know, it sort of passes the, the test of um, fairness and that we're doing the same thing that Somerville's doing and Lexington's doing and um, these, these guidelines apply to 40B projects as well as um, inclusionary zoning. So, um, the marketing plan has been approved by DHCD, and we actually have started marketing the project. Um, and the, there was an ad in the Advocate this week and, and a couple of other newspapers, and we've sent out the, um, started to send out the marketing materials. Great. Bruce, anything on the marketing plan? No, I thought it was uh, pretty comprehensive, and, uh, you know, it was quite a list of people that, uh, uh, and organizations that will uh, be notified of this, and uh, I'd be hard pressed to find somebody who was left out. So, <laughs> yeah, <I'll laughs> but if you do, send their name to me, and I'll okay. send them something. Uh, so, um, and, and you know, just the fact that we are sort of traveling a, a, a path that we followed in the past, I think, is helpful. So, uh, I don't have a, a, any questions or anything we're going to add to that. I have just one question. When we say the anticipated delivery of the first affordable and middle income apartments, the date for that, does that just mean, what does that mean, delivery? That oh, um, well, the available for occupancy. So the, so the date in here was August 2013. Do we have yeah. some of that? <laughs> we right yeah, now. Yeah. No, that sounds like yeah. that's that's I thought maybe a delivery. That sounds like an oversight. I thought maybe oh, I didn't understand what delivery meant. Which we haven't, um, yeah. We didn't change. So maybe this. that this was approved like in May. Yeah, I don't know if it's um, significant to have to change it, but I was well, more curious what the, delivery the meant. Document that we're putting out to a lot of people. So it is no, not that particular. It's thing. not that's okay. An, that's internal for, for for the consultant to use. So what is the anticipated date now? Do we know so for the, delivery? The lottery is November, months. so it couldn't be before December. Right, right. And December, we we're expecting. Um, all, all units to be available at the same time. But by, by that. By December. 
So when do you think the uh, market rate units are going to start getting rented? Um, when we get our um, occupancy permits, which I think is next on the agenda. Okay. But hopefully soon. I think we're, we're hoping that the, um, the building four, we can be occupying in a week or two. Mm -hmm. when our oh, building so inspector signs off on it. They may start mark occupying the market rate units before the affordables slightly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just curious on the, on the timing. Otherwise, it looks great. Very comprehensive. Thanks, Christine. Andy? I'm all set. Karen? No, I don't have anything. Yeah, you've been living it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, one more question. What does CHAPA stand for? Citizens Housing and Planning Agency. Uh -huh. That's not spelled Thank out you. in the material that need to be? It, it might be somewhere. I didn't see it before I saw the abbreviation, so it might be somewhere deeper. Maybe you want to spell that out, actually. Mm -hmm. It's so right on the first time? page. Okay. Yeah, the first time it appears, it should be spelled out, and then... It should be. Yeah, and that I also would be the same for SEB. Yeah, it's SEB and Harold, so yeah, SEB too. Even DHC. Any acronyms, I think the yeah, best practice right is to spell them out the first time and then Yeah. Yeah. It's just courteous to the Yeah, what does S E B stand for? Stockard Anglo and Oh right. right. Okay. And this remember. particular document board simply acknowledges receipt of Okay, acknowledge receipt. Thank you. Um, the only other uh, thing I had was another one is uh, on page three, which is actually about fifteen pages in after the list of uh, <laughs> <laughs> After the list of, of, of different uh, periodicals, et cetera, one, two, three, you just got a, a line in here with respect to um, if JAG is going to retain SEB for some recertification. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just kind of a note. It looks like there's a note in there for yourself. It's in brackets. Mm -hmm. that you may just want to uh, pull out of there as well. So, um, okay, so, uh, so I don't think we even need a vote. Uh, we, I think we can, uh, by our minutes, acknowledge receipt of the... Uh, of the affirmative uh, marketing plan. Uh, but I think it looks good. Thanks, Laura. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the next two documents are the uh, um, regulatory agreements for the affordable housing. Uh, so these have been amended. I'll let Laura go through it. Um, I would like to entertain a motion to approve these. And <laughs> Bruce has got his stamp here and will actually uh, even sign them up tonight and notarize them if the board does approve these documents. And we'll get them back. So. I was writing, excuse me, is this the regulatory agreement? Yes, Thank the you. regulatory okay. agreements, exactly, Carol. Um, so back in 2007, we signed agreements with, um, who did we sign it with? Sims, Re Sims Redevelopment Associates, which was the then entity. And so we had worked out most of the details of everything. And, and these also are pretty much boilerplate from DHCD. They, they try to... Um, make them uniform throughout the state, so it's, it's not like we invented anything here, but um, much of the substance is not even in these documents, much of the substance is in the documents that, that you signed and approved many years ago, at this point, six years ago. But, so this um, document, the first part of this document just sort of restates the facts and brings the, um, the agreement up to date in terms of the, what they call the new sponsor, which is now Arlington 360 LLC, instead of Century Development Associates. It references the old agreement. Um, it notes that the agreement doesn't cover units in the A and B townhomes, which are the condos, that there, there's no affordable units in there, so the deed writer doesn't, um, doesn't cover <coughs> those buildings. It revises the number of units from, a hun from what had been 200 units to 176 units, and therefore the number of affordable units from 30 to 26. Um, it explains the two-tiered condo, which everybody knows what that is. There's, okay, so I wanted to explain that. Um, it talks about the current rents revised from 2007. Um, the original agreement talks about condo conversion and how that will take place and that the tenants will be protected. Um, they're given, I think it's 90 days to decide if they want to buy or not. If they decide not to buy, they can stay for two years without being um, evicted and they're entitled to some relocation benefits. And if they are living in an affordable unit, they're entitled to buy that unit. Is that so all in Exhibit D? It's that 
just says basically that the same provisions will apply. It doesn't explain all the provisions. The provisions are in the original agreement. Okay. But we did um, negotiate that with the developer that the tenants are protected and have the first right to purchase before the unit. So that's all in the original. That's right. For both. Yep. Sets in both sets. Okay. Okay. Um, it says that they can convert to condominium by building, not by floor or by cherry picking units. They can't say, okay, all well, the penthouses we're going to convert and leave everything else rental. It says it has to be building by building, um, which is good because the, the affordable units are not completely distributed throughout the whole building. So that way the affordable will get converted along with the market rate. And then there's exhibit D, which is the last page, which is something we spent an oddly long amount of time discussing <laughs> and coming to grips with, which had to do with how do you treat income if tenants when they go over income. Mm. In a condominium situation, they buy the unit and you never check their income again. They can stay as long as they want, as long as it serves their purposes. But with rentals, that it doesn't work that way. They have to continue to be in a, in a sort of range of eligibility. So that, this last, the final page of the document talks about um, what happens if they go a little bit over income, what happens if they go a lot over income. So it's the, uh, the difference between a little and a lot is 140% of 80%, which comes to about 110% of median. As long as they're at, a, at or below that, they can stay. They pay a little more rent. After that, they pay market rent. and they have a year to, to find a new unit because we want to keep that unit for an eligible family. So that's the that's a short version of a long document that I don't know if you even no. tried to read it, it's pretty dense. If I could just interject for a moment to clear, to underscore what Laura said, the units and to be sure I'm understanding and to make sure the board is crystal clear, the units, the affordable unit location will not move around. If you see the, if right. the person goes over income, then as Laura said, they have a year to find a market rate unit so that that unit can stay where it is in the building and become available for someone else who is income eligible. Okay. Is that okay? I think that's important. But they're allowed to stay in that unit at market rent for that year while they're looking, right? Yeah. Okay. So temporarily, it, 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 it goes on sabbatical from. Yeah affordability to right. market rate and then comes back. Right, but okay. if for our, um, what what's good for us is that DHCD will continue to count it as an affordable mm -hmm. unit for that year. Mm -hmm. But at the end of that year, no. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to kind of move them along. That tells us, I think, that monitoring these units becomes a very important ongoing job for the town. And um, Laura's role as housing director, it means that, especially with these units coming online at, um, at SIMS and with the units that came online at Alta and all the other units we have, there's a lot more monitoring mm -hmm. that has to be done. So it's something I want to make the board aware of so that you, every once in a while, will inquire, how's the monitoring going? And, that, and remind mm -hmm. us to provide you with a report on the status of those subsidized units. So Laura will be the one for the municipality. Yes. Bruce? In the event that um, someone no longer qualifies, they, their income has increased, and they've stayed there for that year grace period, and they don't leave, who has the ability to bring some of the process to evict them? Well, their lease isn't renewed, so um, I, I the sure. owner does, could go Does that fall on the, on the landlord or on the? Yes. Yeah, okay. There's also a relocation stipend that's been negotiated. Okay. Thousand dollars, right? Right. Or as they move out, so or five hundred. But yeah, it's we don't want to evict people. Nobody wants to, but um, it's like yeah, right. we want that unit for someone who needs it. For the unit. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Not if they're that much over income, they yeah. they have other options. Mm -hmm. Shame so. to be penalized when you make more money. <laughs> No. Christine? I'm wondering, and I'm sure there's an answer, why Exhibit D is not attached also to the middle income, affordable units. Uh, 
Um, it's only with the low and moderate. I believe, if I, if I remember correctly, that um, with the middle income, well, first of all, the middle income uh, agreement doesn't get signed by DHCD. That's just between us and the developer. So um, oh, that's one reason why it's not a part of it, because what we negotiated was DHCD who really pushed us to um, nail down what we will do in, in all situations. Um, I think that what happens if you go above 140% of your income is, um, I don't know, do you get the grace period? We never really talked about that, actually. Um, we could just follow we will be the guidelines. I think we were each following the same guidelines. We'll follow the same guidelines. <laughs> the developer and the town agree that we will follow the same guidelines. <laughs> Should you just attach Exhibit D to it also? So that you have... Unchanged right, absence of statement. So you have that in writing? Yes. It seems like it would apply, so I was just... I assume that's okay. the statement, though. Right, because right, right, right. that's something you get to be minimized. Yeah, you may want to yeah. modify it a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Or if you want to wait and see that, that one doesn't need to be signed as immediately as the other one. If you feel more comfortable, we can give we you could also let you know next time. Or, yeah. or fine. Tell us what you want, and we'll do it. Given that's a town-only document, I think right. also you can negotiate it and yeah. send it as a, as a letter. Or a, a short amendment same. afterwards, after okay. the fact is the case. Okay. Yeah, if you think it applies, or whatever parts of it apply. Carol? Okay. I just have a question about whether the regulatory agreement gets recorded with the deed in any way? Yes, it does. Okay. So this will be on the title for future owners? Yes. Well, right. Yeah. They used to call it a deed rider. Now they call it a rent regulatory agreement, but mm -hmm. it does go on the deed. Yeah, it's usually a deed rider if you're buying a prop a unit for but ownership. Oh. Yeah, then yeah, but actually have a rider attached to the unit deed. But, but this is only on the, on the rental. Uh, right now it's only on the rental unit, so, so there's no deed being recorded. Right. But so the, the, um, the regulatory agreement gets recorded at the registry as a standalone document with the rest of the condominium documents. So then, you know, it's a matter of public record at that point. Sure. But I guess I wouldn't expect a, a renter to... No, they're probably not normal. doing a title <laughs> Exactly, because exactly, they're not going to take a look. But, so. but, you know, the renters are going to know because they've gone through the selection right. and, and lottery process. A absolutely. You know, so they know who they are. Yep. And, and, and what's expected of them. Yeah. I think, which is the, the key part there, too. When does it get recorded? As soon as, well, we know DHCD has proved it. The board will potentially, we hope, prove it. And then who records it when and The when? developer records it as soon as it's signed. Okay. okay. And then we'll get proof of it's being recorded. Okay. okay. So we should ask every now and then. For has it been recorded? For monitoring. <laughs> or you know, oh, for monitoring. For monitoring. Yeah. Or recording. Or both. I don't know. Do you want to ask about recording too? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Welcome, Andrew. Um, Thank you. I explained to everyone your conflict earlier. Um, the um, we're going over the regulatory documents uh, right now. Uh, didn't know whether you had any questions on, on them. Or? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Um, Andy, I'm all set with these. Carol, anything else? I think I'm satisfied. Thank you. Can I just yeah, sure. Just been thinking through this last change on the middle income units. Um, I think that it probably is prudent to either vote of how it is drafted now um, or hold on that one until we can kind of vet that. There was a lot of internal sign-offs that happened um, mm -hmm. as we went through our internal process with lenders and things, and I'm just not sure I can just say it, that change is fine. <laughs> so um, I would suggest that if, if, that, if the as written is okay, um, let's let's vote that way, and if it's not, then let's hold on the middle income document, um, the regulatory agreement. We can get that done next time. Is that going to hold you up? Um, the middle income should. I mean, it's nice to do them both at the same time, but um, the the one that's going to take a little longer. Yes, is the, one the reason is the reason the reason why this, so this change, two weeks. that change happened in one document and the other was that there's been a. It's, it's sort of the newer edge of the latest DHCD, and everyone should also realize that these regulatory agreements were have are, are signed 
by all parties now, and there's a financial consideration that went into that as being an extra cost to the project that was the reason why it was so debated back and forth. And with it, we're, we're happy with the solution for the um, low-income units. For the middle-income units, I think the in pro quo was, we, you know, we really, well, I shouldn't say we have a signed agreement for the middle-income units because we didn't sign that one. We didn't? No. So, um, but, it, but the economics were such that everybody had assumed that the costs were based on the baseline from before. So there's been migration of costs and a redo of signed agreements that were executed by both parties that has been a burden that wasn't anticipated. And so because of that, I would plead that kind of the pro quo would be if we can just do and approve the documents as they are now, it would be simplest for, for all of us. Um, That's fine. The, you mean with an Exhibit D added to the middle income? Or with with, without that? Because that? that's not what's in the document that I have my internal approvals for. So. Okay. And we can entertain. If, if, I, if we can all have a consensus, we will add those to the, you know, you know it's a After, good yeah. little afterwards. But, um, so you'll still negotiate it and come up with something that you both are... Yeah, but I just don't think I have clearance with. to be paying transfer fees mm -hmm. that weren't in that document to add, add those fees later. Um, and I also think that there is a difference between a middle income unit and a low income unit with going over income. Because if you're over income as a middle income unit, it's just a different dynamic, I think. What transfer fees? You mean the relocation fees? Mm -hmm. Well, that wouldn't be. You could just keep so that maybe out. let's not well, do that tonight. But I, I think I think the point is 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 um, let me just summarize. Either we need to approve this as is, okay, without any changes, and assume that the developer and the town will negotiate in good faith on a process when someone goes over income in a middle income unit. I think it makes sense for the developer as well because they're going to have some questions with respect to what they're supposed to do. They're going to want some clarity on that as well. So I think I think there is some protection there. However, to make sure there's monitoring, just like there's well, but there will one. be. I mean, yeah. that, 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 monitoring. that monitoring will happen. Right. The question right. is, is what happens when it's monitored and someone does go over? That's what Exhibit okay. D is about. It's not. So it's, there's monitoring somewhere else in here. It says that there's. It's be just the mere monitoring. fact that, that that Laura will do it because. That's what Laura does. Well, we, we don't <laughs> okay. want to lose a middle income unit either. Okay. It's not as yeah. valuable All to right. us as an affordable, but we don't want to, we, okay. we exactly. want to hold on so, to those. So you plan to monitor that also. Yeah. And I, I will also say there's a spirit that the two work to be the same, but just different. Process. So we understand yeah. that. I just can't get it approved without my internal documents. Right. And, and my own view of it is that developer is going to want to know what they're supposed to do as well. So they're going to want clarity on this situation as well. So I think it, it I think personally I'm comfortable in signing it as is on this assumption that is only an assumption and you know no guarantee that they'll come to an agreement on that. But um, so I think that's one choice. The other choice is to put the middle income on hold until that negotiation is done. I guess I'm just not necessarily seeing that that's required for this. That's my own opinion. Bruce. Well, I have a question then, and that is, are we, are we to expect that there's going to be some form of Exhibit D on the middle income units with maybe just percentages and dollar amounts changing, or no Exhibit D, or uh, now I'm, I, I think if we approve it without an Exhibit D, then we are creating that confusion. and. You know, the developer will say um, there's no obligation to do anything if people exceed that. Um, and if we have something with Exhibit D, but, you know, tweaking the numbers and the percentages, then at least we are able to um, kind of hang on to this idea of having these nine middle income units. Right. I think if we have no control over it, we lose them. Because people yeah. will. I, I kind of am thinking maybe we should Hold have on. something in writing. Because yeah. if we if we come to another agreement, then where does that agreement go? You know, okay. where where do yeah. we put it? Yeah. All right. So the other way to do it would be to approve it with an exhibit D to be added that's consistent. And if we have any issues with that, we would come back to the board and ask to amend or consider going in another direction. 
Lily, you do so want to get these things done. you're changing your mind because well, <laughs> you want to get it done. <laughs> yeah. I'm mad there's no Exhibit D in there. Right. Um, we didn't. Uh, I'm so sorry I brought it up. Right. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's good. the time. No, it yeah. is the time. It's the right time. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't we wait? I'll, I'll come back in your next meeting with a if I can offer an olive leaf to, to Jake and his team, though, on this, I mean, I, just speaking for myself, would perfectly understand if the relocation, the transfer fees are different in this context than they are for the low and moderate income units. And I, I hear what you're saying about how that is an economic, you know, how about this? Piece if, of the if, we can, if we can agree to the Exhibit D with no transfer fee, and then we will we will discuss that internally and come back in good faith with Laura. So you want it to be signed tonight? I'd, I mean, I'd like to get these things signed. These things are holding up a lot of other mm -hmm. considerations, yeah, no, and I don't want to be I don't want to be short sighted. I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that would need to come out of the middle income is is the references to VHDP as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, to them certified yeah, things. Yeah. So but they can work all that out. Other so I'm right now. Right now. They, you know, each, one of each middle income. Unit remains as eligible in eligible time. So, I mean, it actually does require a fair number of changes. It does. Because every place that says low and moderate, you have to change to middle. Every place that says certified, you have to delete it. Certified by DHCG. Then I see it in one place. Can we vote to approve the exhibit D? I don't think it's that many. Exhibit D to be included, um, validated by the planning department, Laura Wiener. Mm -hmm. or that would be fine with me. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then we'll just attach it. Why don't we just leave it with Laura still to revise? We don't have to revise the whole thing tonight. But do you want to approve it tonight? Yeah, we can approve it with Exhibit D as negotiated between the developer and Laura Wiener from the town. And the, the only substantive change would be that we would delete the relocation assistance. There would be no relocation right, assistance. Right, and the rest, yeah. she can go through it a bit finer and make sure and she's catching everything. And the rest is just everything. language changes and, not, and percentages. Yeah. The, the percentages will be the same. It'll be 140. It's better than us doing it in a rush. And Laura, I can work with you on it. I will have you approve it before okay. we attach okay, we it. Okay, we can both. We can both there we go. Work so it will have the same percentages. They will re delete the um, references to certified by DHCD. Right. Delete the re relo re any reference to relocation assistance from the middle income tenants. Mm -hmm. And was there anything else? Substitute middle income for oh, low oh, and moderate yeah. income wherever it appears in the Exhibit D. And take out certified to DHCD, did you I say did that? I did. You said that, that. okay. Yeah. And, and then run it by Mike before we sign it, right? Right, I guess the only other thing is, depending upon developer, would, be, would people be willing to have Laura, and I can work with her as well, agree to a different time period if, if that ends up being something I'm sure. In other words, yeah, whatever you instead of like best. giving them a year's grace period, maybe six they only want six or months or something. I don't know, but I mean, I think that I'm just trying to think of the different things that mm -hmm. might be wanted to. Uh, people I think might we want can to give you guys full talk about so. full lease mm -hmm. to change whatever you feel is okay. appropriate. Okay. And do we with the same spirit okay of annual that monitoring. As a, <laughs> as a vote, is that a good idea? we could do that. I, I think. My recommendation would be that we treat these as two separate votes. Definitely. It's going to be a yes. Lot to yes. Let's make. Well, I, I think given the DHD component uh, to the middle income, I mean to the uh, low and moderate, I think that makes sense regardless. So just to have two different votes. So. Okay. So why don't we do that? Andy, did you have something? No, sorry. You good? Was that? Carol, are you okay? I'm all set. Okay. Um, okay. So let's take the uh, low and moderate. Uh, income document first. I'll move to approve. Uh, I'll, I'll move that the board approve the first amendment to regulatory agreement and declaration of restrictive covenants for rental project. Do I hear a second? Second. Thanks, Christine. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're taking up the middle middle income. That's what that one. <laughs> yeah. I'll venture. I, I'll, I'll try it. Um, I move that the board approve the First Amendment to regulatory agreement and declaration of restrictive covenants for rental project. Uh, that is the agreement pertaining to the middle income affordable units, has drafted, but with an exhibit. D to be added there to uh, this, uh, based on the exhibit D to the low and moderate income uh, document, uh, but with the following changes to strike the last sentence. You getting all this, Carol? By the way, of course. Can we list good. all the changes? Okay. Okay. Are we list them? Or maybe you can say. No, that's great. Keep going first. Okay. Uh, to strike the relocation benefits in the last sentence, to strike references to DHCD, to change all references to from any low and moderate income to middle income, and to make such further changes as negotiated by Laura Wiener and approved by the chairman. Should we also mention that there, it was um, I know I got noted out. in here under item six, in addition, a reference to it within the document on page four on the, on the, middle income. On the low income one is where you referenced exhibit D. So you would want to add in that paragraph mm -hmm. also. Item six. Mm -hmm. It's still on page four. That's good. Bruce, would you mind reviewing that last clause and to make such changes as considered appropriate um, by um, senior planner housing director? Senior planner and housing director, something I should do by title, uh, <laughs> uh, has she dream, she deems appropriate and has approved by the chairman of the AOB. Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess that means I can sign. We don't yeah. have to say that I can sign. Okay. Well done. Okay. How about a second on second. that? Second. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Well done, Bruce. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Bruce. You. <laughs> okay. Now we're on to um, the next item of the. We're still staying on stems now. Um, okay. It's been a busy week. <laughs> The past week, uh, and uh, among the things, obviously, are, are everything we've just gone through. Thank you very much. Um, but then there's been a little bit of um, doing and froing because there's been um, a bit of uh, what's the word I want? Uh, we, we need a bit of clarity on um, the use of a temporary uh, certificate of occupancy uh, in this project. Um, when the LDA and special permit were drafted, uh, they were drafted on the notion of a certificate of occupancy, and um, uh, and the word temporary never showed up. So uh, what has happened is, is I've, I've worked with council outside council Jonathan Book at um, a Foley Hoag, and went through the different documents as well as um, what's been going on now. The the building inspector would like to understand that the board is okay with proceeding with the temporary uh, certificate of occupancy um, with the uh, different uh, requirements that have been um, uh, provided to date. Um, and uh, it, it, it's a fair notion. Uh, one of the issues is, is that obviously we've still got things that need doing up there, including the Vista Parks, um, some traffic mitigation, et cetera. Uh, and all those things still need to be done but if you look at the documents, it's really in respect of the final certificate of occupancy. So to give some, bring some clarity and some comfort to the building inspector on what it is he should be looking at for the uh, temporary certificate of occupancy, what we've done is we've put together this resolution um, to, um, we can certainly discuss, but the, the notion is, and working with outside counsel, we came up with this as well as Carol, and Laura was involved in, uh, um, and we've worked it through, is that what we'd like to do for uh, the resolution for the consideration of the board is trying to 
put out there the expectations of the board with respect to the certificates of occupancy and when we expect different elements of the project to, to be delivered. Obviously, we've gone through the revised plan. I think everyone knows that you know, we'd like to get people up there to take a look at the different uh, condominiums, at the uh, flats, start the whole leasing process. The problem is, is we just need to clarify for folks along the way what that means and what the documents require um, with respect to a lot of the different uh, provisions that were made. So I'm going to read out the resolution. Uh, well, first off, um, let me read out the resolution and then let's discuss both the, the what's been going on as well as the resolution itself and any questions that you might have. So the resolution is as follows. Whereas the Arlington Redevelopment Board, the board, are parties to a certain third party, I'm sorry, third amended and restated land disposition agreement dated as of June 7, 2007, as amended, the LDA, with Arlington 360 LLC, the redeveloper, concerning the redevelopment of the Sims Arlington Conservation and Improvement Project, the project. Whereas the board granted the redeveloper special permit number 3272, dated March 31, 2006, the special permit for the residential portion of the project, the residential component. Whereas the LDA, the special permit, and other documents in connection with the residential component contain certain obligations on the part of the redeveloper to be, satis to redeveloper to be satisfied as a precondition to the issuance of a final certificate of occupancy for the residential component, the conditions. Whereas the redeveloper has requested that the Arlington Building Inspector, the Building Inspector, issue temporary certificates of occupancy for completed portions of the residential component, notwithstanding that conditions have not been fully satisfied. Result, that the board informed the building inspector that the board has no objection to the issuance of temporary certificates of occupancy for completed portions of the residential component, notwithstanding that the conditions have not been fully satisfied, provided that the building inspector is satisfied that such completed portions comply with applicable building and safety codes. The building inspector shall not issue a final certificate of occupancy for the residential component until the board has confirmed that the conditions have been satisfied in full. So really, in speaking with outside counsel, that's, so that's the resolution in full. And then, so, I tried to give you some of the background, but in speaking with the, um, uh, uh, for, with Jonathan on this, his, his view is, is that, you know, temporaries were not contemplated, and so therefore, um, this statement is, is one, having been involved in the different documents, et cetera, that makes sense. So, um, so anyway, so that's, that's a resolution that we're trying to do. What that will do is it will give clarity uh, to the building inspector who can then, um, you know, take a more uh, traditional approach to the uh, temporary uh, uh, certificate of occupancy. Don't worry about um, some of the things in the LDA that aren't building and safety related and can keep on uh, moving on with, uh, with the different PCO components. So, um, Bruce, any uh, questions or comments? No, I think it's, uh, I, and I, I agree with what Mike is uh, relaying to us as Jonathan Book's observation on this, that um, as extensive as all of the land disposition agreements and their, their progeny, their, their amendments, uh, and uh, the special permit are, it really doesn't talk about temporary certificates of occupancy. Um, so none of the conditions are really um, hinged or, or uh, uh, on a timeline that coincides with the issuance of a temporary CFO. Um, but it makes some sense from the developer's point of view so they can market these units and uh, the units that are complete. Uh, and, uh, and, and get them occupied to have a temporary CFO for those portions of the project that are done, as long as there's the understanding that the final CFO depends on completing all the rest of the, of the, of the conditions. So I, I'm fine with it. Christine? My only question would be access to the well, to the buildings that would be occupied, and I think and that's, safety of that. Well, and that's what the building inspector needs to do. So we're not, we're so not. So he will do that. Oh yeah, I not mean, just concerned with the building itself, but with. Yeah, oh yeah, no, the that's access of whatever that. his usual process is, and this is. I don't know his usual should, process. Well, <laughs> nor do I. But if we didn't have these extra things in here, right? This is really speaking to the extra. So. This doesn't relieve him any kind of safety measures or appropriate codes or anything. It just allows them to be done sequentially rather than all at once. Okay. So all that will be taken care of also. Yeah. 
the one, one thing that I may add at the board is that um, I think there's a difference between a temporary certificate of occupancy, a certificate of occupancy, and a final certificate of occupancy. The final certificate of occupancy sort of clarifies everything's done for the whole project. The certificate of occupancy for each unit is kind of pat one step past the temporary. It's saying you know everything's ready for this building for this unit. This is done, but it's not saying all of the you know macro conditions have been satisfied until the final. Uh, condition of approval is done. So just a Will the building point. inspector have enough guidance to know what portions of the site need to be done? Yes. Will that be he, obvious? He, he's been very much involved with the whole phasing, you know, how, how access is phased, where the gates are, um, how fire egress works, all the building related codes, fire safety sprinkler systems, fire alarm systems, electrical sign offs on on all of the building technical um, parts. And then this is a TCO process is a normal process for a large, larger project to sort of ease into an occupancy. And then, um, and then when segments are, are, are done or the whole buildings are done, and then the final certificate of occupancy can be done, not TCOs. And then the final is when everything else is done in all conditions that are down the road. Like the CR and all that. Yeah, CR recording, <laughs> the, the yeah, off-site um, right. traffic studies, those things like that. Right, right, right. Well beyond any kind of marketing period. Okay. For, so yeah. it's something our building inspector is very familiar with doing. Oh, Another with respect sites. to the, the with the respect TCOs. to the, the the TCOs and the the building and the safety, absolutely, right. I have no concern on that. And in fact, I think as far as which things which, um, the developer will to the TCO. So they'll actually point out, okay, we want it for this, and then he'll go up and, and uh, inspect it, et cetera. So I right. think that's that's how it goes with respect to, well, what's going to be opened up. So okay. And the building inspector typically in that process is also getting certificates from the architect yes. and the engineers that have affidavits that say these things are done and done appropriately, and that's part of his packaging for each one of these uh, okay. permits. Sounds straightforward, though. Andrew? Sounds good to me. Andy? Fine. Okay. Carol? One thing I didn't notice earlier is um, in the first, whereas the reference to the third amended and restated land disposition agreement. Yeah, that's Isn't that the, supposed to be a 2011 date, yeah. or does it matter? The first LBA Yeah, agreement. yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny. It should just be the land disposition agreement dated as of June 7, 2007, probably as amended. It has amended and restated so, from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, but the attorneys in the room would know better than I. You know, I think maybe the 2011 date is better than the Is that the November 30th? Yeah, because yeah, that's when that's better on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. November 30th, 2011? Yeah, that's right. Was it November 30th? That's what we were referencing <laughs> here. Were we? Okay, good. For taking title to the no, original site. No, 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 no. Maybe that's that's came after, right I was going to say, December. December. Maybe it's not in this It's one. December 2011. We're sure of that. But the yeah, exact I want to say December 15th, but let me give you a sec. Oh, that does sound right. Yeah, no, Carol, that's like that. I saw it in some document. It's probably picked up in the definitions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, on the master deed of the condominium, it defines it as the third amended and restated LDA dated as of June 7, 2007, oh, as funny. amended by that certain first amendment to restrictions contained in the deed as of December 13, 2011. That may or may not be right. Um, well, that's fun. What? I still would like the December date on there. So, so I think we can correct it. Mm -hmm. the, um, I mean, we got the December two thousand. So you just said add the correct December two thousand eleven yeah. date. The third amended and restated land disposition agreement is the title of the document from two thousand eleven. Correct, and I and I like that, okay. and I think that's a good title to use for this um, so because it's amended or restated. The correct so date. I think that's right. I think okay. we can say uh, from two thousand uh, December two thousand eleven within our within our vote. We'll just say scriveners. Uh, Correction when you get the right date. Okay. If you want to quickly run downstairs, I don't mind. You know, um, no, I, 
think we're okay. Right. We're, we're okay. We're, we know what we're talking about, and we can, uh, we can put a bracket in exactly. there. Exactly. We we'll put a bracket, and we'll fill it in correctly. So okay. I'm not concerned with that. So if everyone's okay with the resolution. Um, I have a question, though, yeah, before please. we uh, move to adopt this. And that is, uh, do we want to name or give the resolution itself a little more of a date resolution of ARB yeah. as of September, yeah. 9, uh, just September 9, 2013? So um, I'll entertain a motion uh, to uh, accept or approve the uh, resolution of the Arlington Redevelopment Board um, dated uh, September 9th, 2013. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. On a similar topic, I would like the minutes to um, show one other thing if I could. Um, and that is that because there isn't a mention of the TCO, I'd like to make sure that everyone's in agreement. I don't, there doesn't need to be a vote, that, that the certificate of occupancy is talking about this final certificate of occupancy. So, for example, um, I'll give you one example within the condominium. And just for staffs, um, for staff to be able to do different things and certify as to different things as they come up. I'd like to make sure that, um, for example, if the marketing plan for the 12 condos goes um, nine months, uh, it, uh, the period has to be not less than 12 months, mm -hmm. okay? So it's got to go for three months, at least three months after the issuance of the certificate of occupancy of the condominium unit, or for such condominium unit. Mm -hmm. So it's important that that date as well be the um, Final, Final certificate, certificate, certificate of occupancy. Certificate of the TCO. So I definitely want the minutes to reflect that it's the board's opinion after council that um, that it, that reference among any others within there is talking about the final certificate of occupancy. Should that be part of our resolution? Um, I was thinking of that, and I kind of I wanted to be a little bit careful and give the um, the ins in the inspector something that he can have on its own. Um, actually, so if we want to approve them, I, I'd certainly entertain a motion that it's the um, uh, belief of the, or the, um, um, entertain a motion that the term certificate of occupancy as used in the documents refers to a final certificate of occupancy. Uh, and that actually, so that these folks can actually do their job too, and to allow for staff to certify uh, different factual events as they come up. I think that would be good to give them that ability as well. Things did come up like, was this bond paid? You know, could someone sign that this bond was paid? I'd hate to have, for someone to have to wait two weeks if, you know, for a vote of this board mm -hmm. for some kind of factual determination that's in the purview of, of staff mm -hmm. uh, with respect to that. So I guess I'd love for us to do kind of two things in, in, in the same motion, maybe it's two parts or whatever else. But I'd certainly like for um, uh, for the notion of certificate of occupancy to be the, the final and for that to be on record. And I'm, I'm actually okay if that's just in the minutes so that they can actually use it as part of the minutes. So if everyone's okay with that, then I'd like to ask Carol to make that part of the minutes. So, the, a, a so the understanding is that the certificate of Occupancy referred to in the in the different documents. Yeah. I'm sorry, no, in the in the different documents. In the different documents is the final certificate, certificate of occupancy. Right, and that's certainly count outside council's view of everything within the that's documents that a temporary certificate of occupancy was not contemplated. And then so. the second one is that you're asking the planning board to have the right to have the ability to the authorization. Right from the board to execute documents relative to. Verifying certificate of occupancy. No, no. Uh, uh, factual. Um, uh, sorry, Carol, go ahead. Well, yeah. I don't know if I can say it any better than you would try. Yeah, I go for it. You. I apologize. No, 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 please. Things will come up where we'll be asked 
possibly to vouch that a performance bond has been posted by the developer that right. was um, described as a term or condition of the LDA of a special permit, for example, or that the sidewalk's been completed on Summer Street, or any of these other things that you're now very familiar with. At some point, there will be a need um, gotcha. from the building department to assert, to, to, to certify that those are done. So you were saying that we so as far as factual things are done, uh, uh, you know, are asked for, you know, I'd like staff to have the ability to kind of, you know, make a factual determination of things that are purview that are within, you know, their purview that okay. that a bond was received or that right. you know a payment was made and those right. types of things. Certainly not with respect to building and safety. That's not you know anywhere near what we're trying to do. But with respect to the other things, I think it would be helpful. Now, as a side like to that, I'd also like to point out that. You, one of the one of the general conditions of the special permit for Sims is that uh, prior to the final certificate of occupancy being given, the board will um, I think the word is certify. I don't have it in front of me. I don't think certify that all conditions have been met. Okay, and so what what we now got Jonathan Book doing because of this kind of mad scramble we had on the TCO is what we what we learned from that was let's get ready for the final and so the task I've given Jonathan is to take the different documents on the um, on the LDA and the um, and the different special permits I'm sorry and the special permit and to come up with a, a master list of all the different conditions mm -hmm. so that we can get comfortable obviously he's not going to say that they've been done we're going to have to make our way through so as we approach the the completion of the project we'll have one meeting Check. Where we'll be sitting down with a big checklist with staff here. You know, maybe we'll have Jake in the background uh, uh, shouting stuff from the seats or whatever else as to what, you know, making sure that all the different uh, provisions of it. That's not for tonight. I just kind of want to give you a heads up. But until we do that, there will be some things that kind of roll in that make sense to give staff the ability to, to say, that was done. Just a factual certification. It was done. You know, it doesn't mean that it met its condition or whatever else. But there may be some items, some of these items that staff feels like it's not within our technical purview to be able to say that's been done to full degree or, or in the proper manner that was mm -hmm. um, <coughs> anticipated. So I don't think that this would mean that. No, you're not going to overreach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We would not be able to. Um, you know, we're not. Civil engineers, for example, or we, can't, we couldn't uh, tell you that a road was laid out properly or something like that. But if it's something simple like, yep, they, they provided the check for that performance pond. Yep, that's, we've received that and it's been deposited. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's no reason to take that to the board if, um, mm -hmm. if that's going to We have received yeah. that. So as long as you think the minutes are strong enough. No, well, I think the minutes are strong enough on the first part. On the second part, I think I would like uh, to have a motion. I, I would entertain a motion to approve um, uh, staff uh, having the authority to uh, m make different certifications with respect to uh, factual matters that might come up. Why don't we put them both together? Just, I'm okay. afraid one might okay, be lost fine. just in that's the fine. minutes. No, I'm good. I'm if good. we're going to make one anyways. That sounds good to me. Put them both in there. Okay. You want to give it a shot? Give it a shot? Um, so with respect to the first matter, uh, I would move that the um, that all references to certificates of occupancy in the special permit and the LDA be construed to mean permanent. I think is the right word. Be construed to mean the final or permanent yes. certificate of occupancy, as opposed to a partial certificate of occupancy or a temporary certificate of occupancy. Second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Are those the only two documents we have to worry about? What? The, yeah. the two that you mentioned. The, the LDA and the special permit. Yeah. Oh, it'd yeah, be better just to say all documents. Because the other part are part of either. Yeah, because like the, 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 the example, LDA the is the, plan is is the, the universe, part of, right? Okay. And the others are all. Yeah. You know, Okay. They've got to be associated with one of those two. Okay. Um, and then the second motion would be that uh, the board authorize members of the planning department staff to acknowledge 
factual matters such as receipt of funds or posting of bonds as may be required under the special permit LDA or other documents pertaining to the Sims project. All of that. Let's see if I can remember it. Um, to certify we, that factual we, matters. Yeah. We <laughs> move to out. authorize uh, Pining Department staff uh, to uh, issue letters confirming receipt of funds and or uh, posting of bonds and or other factual matters relevant to the Sims redevelopment project. This will have to do. <laughs> well, I don't think I said the same thing twice anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have the minutes to go over it's a little hard. bit uh, closely, <laughs> so uh, that's fine. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Andy seconded that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I I did. Did. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I think, did you want to give an update on the forest manager? I, so I think that's what I, I had. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's mainly what I had uh, uh, for, for these different documents. Did everybody get the forest manager signed? Oh, they didn't. At the late mm, time no. it came in. Uh, no, it's here. I had to think. We have so many documents. <laughs> oh, you just printed it. Okay. For everybody. With the code on With the code so this is basically the document you've, have you seen it before, the Force Management Plan? No. Ever? Oh, so they haven't had a chance to look No, at I don't think we'd be in a position to do anything with it tonight. Are we you might have seen it? it from the summer. You just Are we just accepting that it? it was de delivered to Are we just accepting it? This is an extra one. I can okay. accept it. Is that all we need to do I'm is accept it? I'm good at accepting things. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to prove or review or, oh. it, you, you just want to acknowledge it's Existence? Yes. And, and basically what okay. it is is what George Ackerson, who was their consulting artist since yep. 2005 maybe, or whenever the first thought of an inventory started, um, he wrote the first part of this and I think Clarissa and Kathy Garnett both looked at it and maybe made some suggestions for revisions, um, but it's... It, Essentially, George's document as the arborist, and then the and the appendix is part of that also. So what he has here is what's existing, is the first part of the forest management plan. What what was existing, um, what the makeup of the different species of trees were, and what he thought would be the best way to approach maintenance okay. of this area and restoration of this area, and the restoration is is basically pertaining to the Norway maples, culling out the Norway maples and planting more native species. I think in here it says there's 60% of the forest makeup was Norway maples. Somewhere in there I read that. Okay. So it's basically taking those Norway maples out, putting other native species in. Then the coda that the Arlington Land Trust and the Conservation Commission, through Clarissa, Brian, and Kathy, I think, Talks a little bit more detail. I don't, what does CODA mean? C O D A. What is that term? It's something oh, it's added at the music. end of a piece yeah, of music. It's the last little I don't know if it's a legal term, but. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering what that actually means. Oh, and also Karen Johnson's from Snack. All oh, landscape architects, I believe. I think Karen's also a landscape architect. All wrote this together, which expounds a bit more on what George wrote because they thought maybe the, there were a few things that were missed and could be rewarded a little bit differently. So that's what the, the coda basically is, but it's referring to the same thing on how they want to approach starting the management, maintenance, re, or restoration of the area and in what uh, sequence they're going to go in. And at the end there's a map showing that phase one will be continuing uh, what the developers are going to be restoring at the trailer site. So they'll be picking up at that same site, which is one of the more visible sites um, that needs restoration. They'll be starting to replant more trees in there. Um, the developer is required to do certain parts of that. 
And that might be something we need to revisit in the near future is um, the whole restoration of that area. Some things may have shifted a little bit and we may have to revisit what that restoration plan is. So we might be bringing that up for a future meeting. Phase two is the bottom of the assisted living slope. Mm -hmm. um, phase, and then phase three is below the lower park. Phase four is farther up. Phase five, phase six is all the way down at Summer Street again. So this is the sequence that they want to start to go in and restore. So that's basically. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's been enough um, input. I think what the holdup was was just getting some of the legalese stuff down as far as how much involvement different parties parties would have. So we like Norway spruces, but we don't like Norway maples. Correct. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Norway Norway maples. Oh, yeah, no, you're Norwegians. Yeah. They, <laughs> since since the time that they were used heavily, they've been discovered to be very invasive, and they. Restrict what can right? grow. Yeah, the Norway maples. Right. Pretty the spruces are good. Spruces are good. Yeah. What's the verb again? They look to us. They're, they they're leliopathic. They're not Ooh. extremely leliopathic, but they restrict what can grow underneath them yeah. quite a bit. Not like beech trees. I don't know if you've ever seen a beech tree. They look like uh, elephant <coughs> trunks, elephant leg trunks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like if you yeah. picture an elephant leg, that's what the trunks look like, and they get very wide, and the branches come down to the ground. There's, one right there's never the anything. Oh, is there? There's never yeah. anything growing under those because they're extremely leliopathic. Nothing can grow, yeah. not even grass. Okay. So Norway maples are similar, but not as much, not, not to that extreme. So they want to get rid of them so they can get more of a diversity and other trees in there. Start, stop the uh, reseeding of the Norway maples. Sounds good. That's it. Amy. Oh, I'll stop. So, uh, a motion to accept the, uh, I guess the, uh, what are we, forest management plan, although it's called the Woody Vegetation Management Plan for Summer Street Woods and Buffer Areas. I will make a motion to accept this. Woody Vegetation Management Plan for Summer Street Woods and Buffer Areas. Uh, could I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yay. <laughs> this took a long Thank time you, coming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I haven't but really had much input into this. Yeah. I've reviewed it. So and I met with the it. forester and things like that. But, yeah. You should play the lottery. No. <laughs> so much done yeah, I know. <laughs> You've been monitoring. Thank you all for monitoring it. its slow progress. Yeah. Yeah. Busy weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Got to stamp. I think right. everyone. We should thank all the bodies. We just have a couple more things. But I think you're going to take the uh, the documents, so you want to stick around for a couple more minutes, or um, I can stick around, or if you want to complete, and I can pick them up tomorrow. Whatever's easier for you. I don't think we're going to talk for long. I think Carol, uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about the um, master plan, master plan. and Carol's going to have to leave in a couple minutes. That's I got a feeling that phone's yeah. going to ring very soon. So they did say, well, what? if they haven't called at this point, it, I may have a few more minutes then. Okay. Had they called before 8.30. So okay. Okay, great. Right. Well, I think they know what they're stuck on, if I had to guess. So, so you want me to... Sure. Why don't, we, why don't we... Okay. okay, so the next item, agenda, uh, agenda item is um, master plan goals. Okay. At so this point in the master plan process, it's important for key boards to consider whether you have an official objective or agenda for the master plan. Uh, we thank you for all of you who gave your time for an interview. A lot of the uh, members of different boards did, as well as uh, citizens and town meeting members and others. Uh, but at this point, if there is, if the board would like to consider whether this board holds an official agenda or objective that you want the master plan to realize. This is the time to consider it and articulate it. You're not obligated to, but it's it's more like um, we wouldn't want to find that out a year from now. Uh, that may sound very obvious, but you'd be surprised this does happen, where in a master plan process you might find out that the planning board, moments before it goes to town meeting, someone might say, you know, I've never really felt right about X, Y, and Z. Or I've always thought the master plan was going to take care of 
X, and I don't see anything in there. And then it it kind of is. Um, it really should come out now because this is the point where the master plan advisory committee has worked with um, the consultant and taken a lot of the public input that um, came out of the workshops in June, the forum last October, the survey, the stakeholder interviews, to try to distill a vision statement that will be the overriding vision statement for the whole plan, as well as goals in each of the plan elements, transportation, housing, and so on, land use. So this is the right time to try to discern different board's agendas and to, to, to then distill that into the vision statement of the goals. So it may be that the board really wants to just see what comes out of the public process, what comes out of the master plan process, but it is a good point in the process for the board to consider whether this redevelopment board, which is the planning board, uh, holds an agenda for the master plan that you think may not otherwise come out in the planning process. So if you would give that some thought, we can put that again yeah. on the uh, next meeting agenda on September 23rd. Yeah, and, and, and I'll take any questions if this isn't clear. And I think the other thing that I'd, I'd, I'd say to, to that last point as far as putting on the agenda, do we, do we, I don't think we really have too much right now. The stuff certainly comes up a lot. Um, but uh, on the 23rd's agenda right yet, I mean, we don't That's have a right. hearing. That's right. We don't have a special permit hearing. Or and it's too late else. to advertise one. So, so if one walked it, in the door as an application, it wouldn't be for the 23rd. And, and, and if I could also, so I think what would be helpful is, is maybe we'll, we'll put aside a good amount of time at the next meeting um, to discuss this. And it might make sense if you've got a viewpoint with respect to this, get it to Carol. She can collect them all and, and even present them at that meeting. Um, so maybe a little bit of homework in that <laughs> if, you've, if you've got a viewpoint or if you think that the ARP shouldn't have a viewpoint because you know we've got the master plan uh, 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 committee working uh, on it, um, then that obviously is a viewpoint as well. So, so I think uh, that's what I would add uh, to those comments that's as well. Helpful. So, um, I would, I yeah, please. I was thinking the same thing, Mike. I think, um, in fact, we should ask ask that our comments get to Carol, you know, in advance, a couple of days, that you have to put them in a type list that could serve as a kind of an agenda or something. I like think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If that could be the Wednesday before, which would be. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, what am I saying? Oh. 18th? Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday? Yeah, that could be by September 18th. Yeah. Is that enough time for folks? Yeah. Would it be helpful for everyone to have the goals that have been stated so far? So they can see what, I have them, but the rest of these guys don't. Sure. They that can would be see great. What, yeah. what's been yeah. formed. It's Actually, not they're decided, draft. they're drafts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And but the I vision think, statement is a very oh, yeah. much of a draft, too. But yeah, I think that would be great. That I'd would love let you anything. see also, what's yeah. what's coming and what yeah. might be missing. Sure. Right, and if they're minds. categories, you mentioned, you know, if you're commenting on open I understand that they may morph quite a bit. Oh, yeah, whatever the categories are would be helpful. So, oh, I did want to make a comment about parking right. or about open space or something you'll remember too. When you say categories, do you mean the plan you, elements? Yeah, yeah. I okay. think you said there was, that people made comments about various different aspects that are, that but, you have categories or aspects, whatever they are. Those would be helpful to know. Sure. So it would be it would, especially helpful for Andrew, who's yes. stepping into this. I personally think that, that, that a big part of that night should be, what should we be, you know, saying with respect should to that. Our role be? What, what should our role be? Exactly. I think that's I think that's key. And I don't you and know, to see the progress it. might be helpful for us oh, to see oh, I, what are we comfortable absolutely. with but what I, our role is. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I yeah. think it's both points is what I'm saying. I think there's actually kind of like a pullback of okay, well what is our role? Okay, if we determine that this is our role, here's some of the things we want to say if that's what we want to do. So, mm -hmm. so I think both so I think we'll put a good amount of time, probably north of an hour. Uh, to kind of because I think we haven't done anything master plan right. wise yep. for a while. I think it's I think we're due. Yeah, and uh, I think it makes sense. So I'll work with uh, Carol on the agenda, but I would definitely uh, hope to. Uh, the only other item related to master plan for this item um, is.
Town Day. Uh, I hope you give some thought to um, doing an hour or so or a couple hours uh, at the Town Day booth. Uh, staff will be there, a staff person at a minimum will be there, that's our intention, we're probably going to be working on that tomorrow morning to try to be sure we have a staff person at all times to back up um, the Master Plan Advisory Committee and any redevelopment board member who um, would like to make it. I think it'll be fun, I also think it'll be very uh, positive for the Master Plan Advisory Committee members and the ARB to be talking about this with the public together. Mm -hmm. I think that will be very informative and that will be a good dynamic. So if you can, if you're free, it, for those of you who did it last year, I, th I thought yeah. it was fun. Yeah, we're um, You it seemed to enjoy yourselves. <laughs> it was fun. So yeah. uh, I hope you'll give it some thought. We'll send around a, um, a doodle or something. So sure, we already can... sent one around, I think. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure everyone got it, though. I think. We'll resend it. Yeah, if you it, could. Yeah. We'll make sure it goes out again, or I'll send you a reminder to get to the link. Okay. Yeah. Find your shirts. I got it. I, I actually cleaned out my drawers and saw it the other we'll day, and I said, oh, I won't put this in the bin. These are... Um, they're simply shirts. They're golf shirts in okay. the Arlington color with the Teddy's well, got to give it back. It doesn't go well. <laughs> well, staff now. Staff exactly. <laughs> you, you <laughs> just, but it's got needs a new shirt. It's got oh, to... yeah, you probably do. <laughs> did they say the word? They do. They say I redevelopment board. I think there's one extra shirt floating around from Adam. Just because I, I saw it the other day. Oh, we'll I have an extra, time. I believe, in oh. my office. Yeah. I got okay. really wet the last time, so whatever hours it doesn't rain are the ones I've got this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the sunny hours coming really to you. Hot, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe <laughs> I'll take the wet. Maybe then. you're right. Maybe I'll take the rain. Okay. So I think that covers that. Um, with respect to the July 29th uh, minutes, I think there was a little bit of confusion there because uh, those were included in the last package. Um, so I think we'll hold off on those uh, for tonight. And we will add those uh, to the 23rd agenda as well, as well as any other minutes that we have at that point. Uh, we'll recirculate and get those around. I think that's probably wisest with respect to that. So, great. So, any other items, business items that we'd like to talk about before? I did want to mention one thing. Okay. I mentioned that we might have to revisit the. Um, restoration of the marketing trailer site on Sims. Mm -hmm. We may also have to revisit the slope behind the assisted living, how that's being planted. We're kind of working on it behind the scenes and we may be able to resolve it, but we may not. And we may need to call in the applicant mm -hmm. to explain some more things. Okay. Okay, we can okay. definitely talk so about just that. a heads up on that. Sure. Yeah, we may not need to. And I may okay. be able to just update you if something changes. Okay. Uh, which I'm sure is prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Okay. Okay. I think that's all the business for tonight, so move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.